from the Showtime Lakers through the uh, Kobe and Shaq years and now to the present, there may be no one that has seen as many Laker classic moments as Laker PA announcer Lawrence Tanner. Starting in 1981 with the purple and gold, LT, as we officially call him and affectionately call him, as he has been up close and personal with the purple and gold from courtside, giving him a perspective of this franchise like no one else. Legends, sponsored by calljacob.com. Well, you talk about someone who, who really saw it all. I mean, you have not had, you have the best seat in the house. That's interesting. I've been thinking about a book, and that, that might be the title. <laughs> <laughs> I think about so many experiences that I've had, the championship year, the whole ambiance with the Celtics. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the forum for game six of the 1987 NBA Finals. In the 80s, it was like none other that I can ever compare to. At guard in his eighth season from Michigan State, number 32. What was your most memorable moment as Laker PA announcer at the Forum? 1983 All-Star Game, Marvin Gaye. Hey, you see? Marvin's national anthem still resonates with me as one of the historic moments in my life. And obviously NBA lore when he came out and revolutionized Francis Scott Key's rendition of our national anthem. He gave me a cassette tape to give to the sound man. I threw it to Dick Stockton, and Dick Stockton introduced Marvin Gaye to the national TV audience. And I heard this music come on. I said, damn, man, Marvin gave me the wrong tape, man. This is sexual <laughs> healing. <laughs> And then obviously we all kind of were mesmerized. Uh, it was an interesting experience because at one point there were some booze, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, and, and clapping and, and, and cheering. It was, it was a mixture initially. And then it became overpowering uh, pro Marvin. It was a historic moment. I think about it a lot. And I look back at that video and just, I'm amazed at how he could pull that off. What about, what about the Staples Center? What's your most memorable moment at the Staples Center. 81 from Kobe. This would be 18 for 20 from the line and an 81 point game. I don't think magical even is, is an adequate word to describe that experience. Uh, I've been, you know, seeing, playing basketball myself since, you know, the fourth grade. And I've never seen a player just dominate, just take over a game and just score. I mean, it's like when he had 50, you know, we're calling up to the stack crew, you know, where is he at right now in terms of Laker records? Where is Elgin at? You know, that kind of thing. And um, the headset is just booming, people going through the record books. Every time he hit another basket and he got to 60, he got to 65, and he got to 70, he got to 75, and he got to 80. And I remember so distinctly, at the end of that game, I announced, ladies and gentlemen, please save your tickets, folks. You have just witnessed history. I'd like for you to go back to, whether it's a championship game or just a regular season game, one that sticks out to you the most. The game that I think about in terms of intensity and, and loudness and just over the top was the Western Conference final game seven against Portland the first year we were at Staples Center. We were down like 15, 16 points, man. We came back and won. It was like, like the whole city of Los Angeles was like, mm, pulling for the team, man, bringing them through. It's got to make you feel real good to know that you have seen some of the things that people only hear or read about as far as the Lakers are concerned. Absolutely, absolutely. I feel very blessed, very honored, uh, humble to be in this position for these many years. Um, I, I can't explain it in words. I'm just very, very blessed and very happy.
You know, he really means that. He is so humble, he's, he, but he's, he's the best of the best. He's so smooth. I know yeah. he was working on a jazz station, but the first time I walk into the Chicken and Press Room and I see mm -hmm. Lawrence Tanner stand up, I heard, I heard him talking, mm -hmm. and I didn't know what he looked like. Then he stood up. He's like six six. Yes. Like whoa, yeah. this dude is awesome. And it just he yeah. has it when he starts talking. Laker fan. Can like, you imagine if at that All Star game at the Forum, <laughs> if he had played <laughs> the cassette that Marvin gave, gave him to a sexual healing? I've heard those stories different times. John Ireland tells a good story that Lon yeah. Rosen tells him the story of how it all came together. And Lon Rosen, uh, now Dodger executive, was young at the time. And, like, Marvin, no rehearsal, no nothing, just shows up, smooth as can be, and just boom. Knocks and he it was out. late. He's driving everybody crazy. He no, was late. He, he wasn't late. He was on he, his own time. He was on Marvin Gage's time. <laughs> yeah, that is for sure. But LT, you know, the, the, he, he, he is, I hope he writes a book. Yeah. It would be a cool one. He's seen everything. You, you He's better seen believe it more than anybody else, that's for sure.